founded in Brussels, owner of seven studio albums, three live albums, one of the more noticeable and bigger metal bands ever known in Belgium. Welcome, Frankie de Smet van Dam from Channel Zero. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Uh, how are you? I'm uh, fine. All right. Um, tell me, how does a metalhead of a metal band that likes sweet cherry beer makes a beer? Ha. Well, things happen uh, because they actually happen, apparently, because um, th this whole story with my beer began uh, actually in 2010 without actually realizing that I was going to make a beer, uh, let's say, eight years later. <laughs> so what I actually want to say is that um, um, I think now three years ago, um, a couple of fans of Channel Zero kind of sent me a picture of a beer that's called Black Fuel. And uh, they were so proud because they said, oh, great, we bought your beer. <laughs> The beer from channel zero and uh, i was like it's impossible because we don't know of nothing <laughs> so the funny part was that uh, the black fuel beer was a little bit announced with a couple of my lyrics of that um, song uh, around it so mm, nothing really spectacular but uh the funny thing was that we uh, went having a talk with uh, the man and the funny part of it is that um Back in our reunion uh, moment in 2010, we actually were at that guy's uh, student room where he proposed us one of his first beers. And since we were having our 2010 uh, reunion show, uh, he came to the idea. He was also a fan of Channel Zero. He saw us in front of a bar not so far from the AB in Brussels. <laughs> And um, the funny part is that he introduced us uh, to his beer on his student room. And then, uh, let's say, yeah, eight years later, seven, eight years later, he brought out the beer Black Fuel. And um, so that's shall the whole story were me triggered to, let's say, make a beer, try to make a beer. I'm not a brewer, so um, I actually then accidentally fell into um, um, into a bar where I was doing an interview again with Channel Zero and uh, the owner of the bar in Ghent, he told me, um, um, why don't you uh, uh, call the brewer and see uh, where I'm working with and see where we can, where you can do something. And um, I got a phone number and how it started. <laughs> yeah, so actually you're referring to the Black Fuel beer, the Belgium Strong Ale from brewery Enigma in Heusesolder in Flanders. Yes, Yeah. yes, yes, yes. And then you got in contact with uh, a brewer. How, how, when, how was that? Was you, you didn't already, you already knew how to make a beer or was that like? No, 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 I'm not going to uh, brag or lie about it. I mean, I never brewed myself, so that was probably also the fact that I didn't start working on this idea earlier because, I mean, you know, I'm, I've, I've been doing a lot of things in my life, <laughs> mainly doing my music, but um, uh, brewing is, uh, uh, it, um, yeah, it's, it's a particular, uh, it's not a hobby. It has to be something to do for for um, let's say really serious. <laughs> Thing is, um, I got a phone number. Um, I uh, called uh, the man. It was Stefan from Brewery Struve uh, in Ichtegem in Belgium. Yes. And um, the funny part was that there was a click, instant click. So um, um, we sat together, and that felt right. Uh, and I said, look. Um, I have a couple of ideas. Um, if you want to go through that thing, um, and he said, "Yeah, why not?" Uh, and that's where it started. What we're talking now, I think, uh, 2017. I think somewhere after the summer. Um, and then um, the the crazy thing is that I'm, I'm since I'm used to making albums and uh, creating 
quite some stuff around album covers and whatever. Um, I actually, um, it took me not too long to come up with this. Yeah, very metal. And uh, so it had to be rock and roll, you know, I mean, metal, yeah, but you know, it, it had to be rock. So uh, hard rock, whatever. So the thing is, um, I came up with this and, and um, uh, Brewery Strubble was instantly like, whoa, you're serious. <laughs> you don't want to fuck around with doing something just by doing something. I said, no, why should I? I mean, if, if I wouldn't be interested in working on that thing uh, uh, really serious, um, I wouldn't do it. And so um, uh, since Black Fuel was already taken, um, I didn't. I was not going to bring out Black Fuel 2 or, or whatever. So, I mean... Uh, we just had a talk with, um, oh, I forgot his name now, of uh, the, the man who created this beer, Black Fuel beer. And we just said, just make sure that um, if you sell like 100,000 copies of it, that um, our publisher doesn't wake up <laughs> in Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very sp specific beer also. I mean, becoming successful with beer is as most people think easy but it's not you know i mean you don't get rich overnight that's not how it happens um so on the other side um i started uh, working with uh, brewery strubber on this whole um uh, uh turbo noir thing which i came up with the reason why it's uh, eau in the end is because there was a beer in uh, india that's what's called um a turbo with an O. So, uh, and also the name was free. So I started working on the whole Turbo uh, experience. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I have the beer now. I actually have my box. I, I, I might even show it to you. If you have two seconds, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, uh, this is, um, yeah, that's the box. It's going to be interesting to send live. Then also, uh, of course, logo. It's, cool. a, it's a real guitar. It's in cardboard, but it's a real guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I also have a... Uh, yeah, my whole 24 yeah. thing, yeah. which is actually full. Okay, so <laughs> this is uh, how it's been uh, made. So, um, sorry, I get back on my chair. <laughs> yeah. uh, and let's let's talk a bit about the choices that you made with the beer. So, I, people who don't know you, but I, I followed you with a, another interview of Welcome to the AA, where I learned a lot about uh, about you. You like sweet beer, so like fruity beer? Well, you know, I've, I've actually always been drinking uh, Creek. Um, uh, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's a women's beer. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. Tastes in beer. 24 million tastes in beer and you have even 96 million different opinions about beer so i mean i like to creek um i like creek lindemans it's particularly uh but the thing is uh for my first beer it was like something that you know i was thinking of um back in the days when we were young and were starting to listen to heavy metal and hard rock uh, we were all uh, drinking in um, uh, Kremen. It's it's the place where I was went to school, and uh, we were all drinking a, a beer with a sip of coke in. Yeah, mazout. So, yeah, the mazout uh, thing. So mazout is diesel or whatever how you can call it um, in the in the yeah how would I say. It's it's in the uh, uh, in Volksmund. <laughs> 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 so the thing is, um, um, 
that was uh, something where I was reaching for. Of course, in this beer, there is no Coca-Cola. Of course not. But um, it's sweet, and you still have a sore aftertaste. So okay. somewhere you can kind of like um, uh, look into yeah to the, to the fact that it's it, it's a little bit comparing to that Mazut beer from back in the days. So uh, we worked a long time on like finishing the 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 whole um, uh, mousse. So the the when you p pull it out. Yeah, the foam. In the beginning, there was absolutely the foam was not at all there. So uh, it took us quite some time before we. If you pull, pour it out now, you see this a nice yeah, correct layer of foam, um, which is Im important in my opinion. And um, so it took us, I think, a little more than a year. And uh, at a certain moment, we came to that first moment where uh, we were like okay now it's up to you uh, said the, the brewer <laughs> and tell, so um can, can you tell me a bit what was yeah. the the feeling you wanted to create you want to have a, a sweet but sour aftertaste refreshing heavy beer that you can drink after your work something like that oh, the thing is um from my manager out he said to me, yeah, you have to bring out the heaviest beer you can make. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, uh, but let's start making a whiskey then. <laughs> true, true. So, I mean, yeah. So the thing I was also like, okay, the heavier you make it, the less you can drink from it. So if you want to give it a little, how would I say, a little um, of surviving chance, you need to be a little uh, on the edge. But you can't be over the edge in my opinion. So mm -hmm. also the, uh, the Stefan of the brewery, Strober, he told me like, uh, sorry, but if you go higher, it cha it'll change a lot in the taste again. And we'll, 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 we'll again have to from zero. So um, uh, I thought eight degrees was uh, pretty okay. The, the danger thing is, is when the dragon uh, wakes up. <laughs> yes. It's a very dangerous dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in terms of artwork, um, you designed yourself um, the logo, the dragon, the name. But why a dragon? Is there any special meaning in that? Or was that to give it a, a fantasy metal look uh, immediately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you're totally right. I mean, I, I didn't want to... I mean, how how... I've been playing music for like 30 years now. Um, everybody knows me as a hard rock uh, singer. So it needed to have a, a feeling that it's, it's not like metal metal, but it's, yeah, it's soft touch. You know, it's, 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 it's um, yeah, it's, it's a beer that is, it's actually sweet. Um, and it's uh, it's sweet on the outside, but when you drink a couple of them in a one hour, um, I can tell you it hits you like a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon will come. Yes. <laughs> so the dragon wakes up, and then uh, even the guys, uh, yeah, but I can drink ten duvels, and yeah, they all can drink ten duvels. But I've already seen a couple of guys that after seven turbos that they were hanging on the on the bar, yeah. looking for. Uh, for their equilibrium. So um, I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, they all can drink um, like tigers. But uh, I'm telling you, if the dragon wakes up with this one, I've seen, um, yeah, I see quite some guys um, hit the ground already. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe but that. It's, it's normal. It's normal. I mean, you drink um, and it, it goes in really quickly. When you drink a duvel, um, you kind of like feel it's a heavy beer. It's heavy mm -hmm. in alcohol uh, with the sweet taste from uh, Turbo Noir. Um, you're, 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 you don't actually feel how heavy it is. And that's the, yeah, that's the tricky part of it. But of course, that's why I'm saying uh, when the Drake, the dragon wakes up and the tail starts to go like this. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, and tell me, in your uh, top days with Channel Zero, did you never got approached by a brewery to make your own hot sauce, your own beer? Because I think that was the day that every metal band had his own commercial lager with their logo on. 
Oh, uh, to be really honest, no. I mean, always we probably would have had it. So, uh, to, I think uh, somebody once made a palm beer with the name of Channel Zero on it. Uh, but it was more like a gift. It was in the region of palm beer where it was brewed, where we got that thing. Um, but uh, no, not even, not really. I mean, even I know there are a lot of bands who have their own beer, but in the case of Channel Zero, it didn't really happen. Uh, the the only thing also, which is is a little bit important, I'm uh, I'm doing this all by myself. Uh, I will be pretty honest. Uh, Doing a band sometimes is really complicated because if you want to change a color or make another cover, it's always like 25 opinions, 35 different opinions. So it's like going uh, in front two steps and uh, at the same time going back five steps. So um, I didn't, I didn't want to become in, in this beer thing uh, was something where I had to, yeah, how, how would I say, uh, always uh, ask and see. Sometimes in, in, in the beer market, I'm inside the beer market now for one year and a half. Believe me, uh, you, you have to make decisions quickly and fast. And, and it's not always simple um, It's with everything uh, if you try to sell something. so. But I'm having a greater time with, with, uh, with this beer. Um, I mean, even now with the Corona thing, uh, believe me, the beer actually stays in my ass. So, yeah. so. And then somebody made ice cream out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, of course, yeah. The only advantage I have is that people know me over here uh, with Channel Zero and that creates always opportunities. So the, the funny part is um, the ice cream thing is again, um, uh, somebody from uh, Popering, Popringe, uh, they have an ice saloon, like a professional thing, uh, not just making a little bit of ice. They they already make it like his mother mates, uh, makes ice cream for the West Fleetren beer. And um, but they can't sell it. So um, since they are like specialized in making beer uh, ice cream. Uh, the guy uh, one day he sent me like, uh, "Wow, man! I used your beer to uh, create the new ice, uh, new test." In uh, you have to come and taste it because it it tastes really really good. And um, we went over and yeah, I mean, I, I, oh man, Oof, you know, I'm a sweet mouth, so you know. And uh, but it was really really good ice cream. It's ice cream that's fully artisanal. It's it. Um, it's like the, as the same as my beer. Um, uh, Turbo Noir is also made completely, um, not commercially uh, filled with chemicals or whatever. And the same thing happened with the um, uh, ice cream. So it's um, artisanal, um, real uh, ice cream uh, with no, uh, how would I say, uh, commercial uh, trickery to make it uh, easier or whatever it's it's the full version so i mean is we're not so trying to make something uh f like 50 percent. it has to be 100 <laughs> percent. of course is that also something um i saw that you do do uh, a lot of tastings of your beer do you also pair it then with your ice cream is that some of your main promotions oh. now well it's difficult because the ice cream um i don't have like an ice cream car <laughs> <laughs> to to uh, keep it to keep it with me of course i always have it here uh, and it's also already introduced in some uh, supermarkets uh close to to my place here but the thing is uh, ice cream uh, transporting ice cream is um yeah it's uh, not as easy as it seems so um I, I don't pair it with um, uh, with uh, the degustations, which I'm doing, but um, most of the time the degustations re really go really well because um, when people come over to do a degustation, uh, I pour them beer and not a little bit, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> after two, three, four hours, most of the time by the end of the degustation, uh, they all... Uh, 
they all go home and they sleep very good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So then you had your with, uh... with two cases, two cases of beer under their arms, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, commercially. Um, so then your batches were ready and uh, you hit the market. How was it? Um, yeah, you're of course very famous in the the rock and metal scene. How was it going then to the average Joe to sell your beer? You you went to bars in your neighborhood well, to sell it. Well, the, the, the funny part was that uh, I made like 100 cases to start and um, that seemed like not too much. And then the funny part is uh, <laughs> I made everything. Um, I went with my normal car. I don't have a van. And uh, then I saw cases all together and I was like, holy crap. That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, but the funny part is, of course, I have my RAM and stuff, uh, but even the first day having not a panic, but I was like, holy crap, how I'm going to get rid of these hundred cases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I, I was lucky because a couple of friends of me saw it on my Instagram and they said, oh, I want to buy one, I want to buy So I, the first day I sold like 20 cases and... Um, it went from mouth to mouth, blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, let's say 10 days later, the 100 cases were gone. And I was like surprised that it was going so fast. So um, um, that took away a little bit the the, the, the scarcity of, <laughs> I was a little scared of the fact that I invested something and I was like, oh my God, maybe I will have to drink it all by myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it didn't happen. So I reordered 300. And then um, from there on, I started. But the thing is also, I, had, I was lucky that a, a distributor from uh, my hometown in Zottegem, uh, he noticed the beer and uh, he said, look, uh, if you want some help uh, finding distribution, uh, we, we have to talk. So we went, uh, we, I know we, we had a talk of like 18 uh, turbo noirs. <laughs> oh, with two persons. With three, pe with, with three, no, with three. <laughs> Um, but uh, okay, we had our first click again. Um, so I sat down together with him and the brewer, and um, the, I, I was lucky that he was investing in it because honestly, I didn't have the money to buy a truck of beer. And uh, but the thing is, um, what many people uh, think is easy if you have a truck of beer that's really fancy to or Facebook. But uh, trying to sell it is uh, still yet another thing. So, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I, I know a lot of people. Uh, I know how. Um, I also have a Facebook ad company, um, so I know how to get it out there. And of course, the only other thing which is really, really important is, can you really sell it? So. Um, of So that went quite smooth, the selling the first batch. Well, yeah, in the beginning, let's say the, 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 the thing is you start selling your beer and sometimes you're, you're lucky. Somebody buys 15 cases. Sometimes it's like one case, then it's three case. And, and then you see some stores literally do efforts together with me uh, on like Facebook or whatever. And then they see, of course, I do the degustations. I, I take my time to uh, be there one full day. Most of these uh, stores, they, are, they hardly can believe I can I do this myself. Um, they think I would uh, have like 15 or 10 people uh, that I'm paying to do all that. No, I'm, I'm actually doing the whole thing myself, uh, which is not a problem because I believe that people need to feel that I'm serious in what I'm trying to achieve. So, um, um, uh, and uh, it's also really good to be a little bit like with music between the people that believe in your product. And um, the best thing you can do is uh, hear the feedback from the first line. And that's uh, how I actually quickly noticed that this beer has some value. And um, uh, let's put it that way. If uh, in the beginning uh, of my first 100 cases, uh, 
95% uh, of all the people that drunk it would have said, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Uh, I would have never done it. <laughs> but it was the opposite. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And you were also at the Bruges uh, Beer Festival. How was that uh, from being a, a metal singer going to a beer festival? Did you know that something like that existed? And how was it? Well, yeah, I, I knew it existed. Uh, uh, I've been to uh, beer festivals. That was not really the problem. But um, the thing is, um, uh, I think in somewhere there are not so much differences in being on metal festivals with beer. Of course, this is specifically for beer. Uh, when you're on a festival, it's specifically metal. But I met a lot of people that are in the metal scene that were actually, or hard rock scene, that are also on the beer uh, festival uh, thing. So um, uh, everybody knows that heavy metal and uh, or hard rock and beer are like two hands on one uh, tummy and most of the time it's a big tummy <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there is a, a liaison d'amour going on between the rock and metal thing but um, the thing is also that um, I have to admit that um, for me it was like uh, I, I was not like surprised to, to have that um, uh, symbiose of, of, of people uh, and um, uh, the thing is, yeah, on a beer festival, uh, like the Bruges Beer Festival, uh, the first year was uh, pretty heavy. I remember that I was quite hammered when I walked out <laughs> by night. <laughs> yeah. what, what I had a lot of fans try to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is one of the strangest places you went to uh, sell or promote your beer? Oh, the strangest places... Oh, 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 oh. Um, well, the thing is, I've been to quite some places and strange places are really rare to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I can't say because most of the stores are really nice. Um, it's, um, yeah, I mean... Um, the only, the only thing I once had is when I was doing a degustation and normally I take water from the tap. Tap in Belgium is drinkable water. And uh, I remember that I was pouring the water into my, I have two like special um, washing uh, tubs, turbo water washing tubs. And uh, the, the, the funny part is that the, the water that I was pouring inside, I was like, it was yellow. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> okay. This should be drinkable water. <laughs> so what I did was I poured it out and I went buying like, I think, I don't know, five big plastic uh, water gallons um, of, of water. And I said, uh, I'll do this water in uh, my uh, in my tubs to wash my water. <laughs> oh, the, the, the glass. <laughs> wash my water how do you wash your water <laughs> with soap <laughs> so yeah i mean yeah but most of the time literally it's really cool um it's rock and roll i'm used to that so uh, people are really happy because uh like i said when i do a degustation i don't look for one bottle more or less i mean you also um, uh, did some tap takeovers, I assume. What is the amount of um, Turbo Noir going in uh, in kegs? Oh, at this moment, it's not really extreme. Uh, in Bruges, we have a bar called uh, 2B, the beer wall. Maybe some of you guys know it. Um, that guy has all like um, specific beers, no commercial beers. And um, he has it on tap because he also has 16 taps but that's uh, actually the only one that has it on tap uh, at this moment uh, so in numbers whew, it's it's not like extreme i mean um you have to see that um, uh, my beer at this moment is most of the time uh, on bottle uh, it's it's not like i think the reason why it's not so much on tap is it it's a beer with high alcohol if you drink five of it you're half hammered or some people already fully hammered. So, I mean, it's not like a, uh, a bar 
is super crazy. It's not like a beer you drink all night long because if you start at four in the afternoon and by eight, nine, you're hammered. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's the reason why it's not really on tap, on tap uh, in a lot of places. Yeah. What But, is one of what is one of the things you underestimated the most when you started this uh, beer adventure? Oh, the most underestimated thing. Uh, is like um, a lot of people uh, think it's really easy and somewhere it is but what I mean with easy is that I get in touch with a lot of people uh, but in the end you have to work on it and what I also mean is that when somebody says yeah I will, I will do your beer in my bar or, or whatever um, uh, it's cool but uh, some of them are like after after two, three months, they're like, yeah, but it doesn't sell um, uh, that much. But the thing is, yeah, that much. It's, uh, some people tell me, man, your beer really works amazingly here, but you literally see that they are also working in their store to promote my beer. So I can help promote it, but it's a kind of a two, uh, a two way of, of building it, building it up. I mean, it's not because half a Belgian knows me for my music that half a Belgian wants to drink my beer. And um, uh, not that I underestimated that, but um, I already saw quite some, um, uh, how would I say, uh, difficulties on that matter because it's the energy I'm putting in is really, really extreme, if I may say. And uh, sometimes it's a little deceiving, but yeah, did I, was I really surprised? No, the only thing that I underestimated a little bit is that my press setting, uh, a lot of um, um, uh, um, gross, grocer, gross, grocery shops, um, they literally put a price on whatever they think. So um, people, uh, of course, communicate with me on Facebook and whatever uh, to tell me, hey, uh, your beer extre is extremely expensive here. So, yeah. I had a price setting from day one, which I firmly believe in. It's not a cheap beer. It's not actually an extreme uh, um, expensive beer. But uh, of course, um, I'm 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 have to fight hard to keep a price level for um, the whole Belgium. Yeah. So uh, that's that's complicated because I'm I'm not Inbev. I'm not a, a big a big company. So some people uh, literally do whatever they want with the, the price. And um, that's complicated. Yeah. Is there also a downside that uh, a lot of people know you from uh, Channel Zero? Let's say, oh, do you want a beer? No, but can I get a selfie? Is that still? Uh... Oh, yeah, but you, I, I've never had a problem with that. I mean, um, it, it, it's all and it's it's an altogether thing. I always say if you're if you if you can't stand that. Yeah, you, you don't have to be on a stage. So um, uh, it's it's been my life for like 30 years now. So I, I'm, I'm used to that. So I don't have a problem. But the thing is also most people literally, they, they try it at least, which is for me uh, uh, the most I'm actually happy with because the, um, uh, when people give it a try, that's the only thing you can try. Uh, they ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and if they do, With, uh, uh, how would I say that's how you win souls soul by soul people by people so um, uh, th th that's the thing that it's really important I mean I'm, I don't take it for granted that uh, uh, that's not because people know me that my beer is going to like go easy or fast I'm, I mean I'm not even interested in that I'm, I uh, that's why a lot of a lot of uh, shops are literally surprised when they when they have a A degustation with me that they're like oh it's it's you the guy who sings in that band and i'm like yeah <laughs> it's me yeah so they think i will send like uh, other guys or other people or a nice beautiful girl but it's not how it works i mean it's the same with music believe me uh starting a band making a song trying to sell your music is as complex as the same with beer so for me there's nothing new under the sun um, uh, i'm prepared to work for this and and I'm having a great time, so. Cool. Um, can you tell us a bit what are the future plans with Turbo Noir? Is it getting a, another baby dragon? Well, um, 
If you have one more one more uh, second, I will show you something. <laughs> So, talking about baby dragons, yes, there are baby dragons coming in uh, on their way. And are you going to tell me you're crazy? But that's cool. I was born in a in a town that's called Crazy Town. Yeah, indeed. So, and then um, I don't know if you see this. Um, it's a baby dragon's egg. Yes. So. That's um, uh, chocolate made with my beer. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, there is dragon blood. <laughs> and it's also ex extremely hot. So oh. the thing is, if you uh, eat, like, say, I think two or three of this, you probably will need turbo noir to, um, <laughs> like, the firefighter. So, um, and it's. What do you mean? Once you eat one, <laughs> you will need a drink to um, to calm it down. <laughs> okay, and they're gonna be sold separately, or is it gonna be linked to the beer in the bars? Um... Well, the thing is, this product we worked on it for six months. Um, I'm sorry. Um. The thing is, um, we took we took some time to develop. Uh, we finally came up with um, the hottest pepper you can find on the uh, planet. Which one? The it's uh, Car pepper? Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper. Reaper. Yep. And um, this dragon egg is made that pepper. And believe me. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a, a future plan coming on. There's the dragon already pounded some eggs. <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, oh, la, 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 la. it's um, pretty hot. So the thing is, uh, you see the dragon, and then uh, the next step, the next step, it's uh, you that are. <laughs> and then what you need to do is drink it. By the way, I will drink one. But I, yeah, I need to have an opener here. I will, I will do this in a minute or two. So that's a future plan also. But again, it's something that literally fell out of the sky. Uh, a Channel Zero fan that literally works on the engines of, of um, Boeing, Boeing aircrafts. Yes. Um, did um, a chocolate um, uh, incentive. And he said, my uh, a friend of mine was a, a lady. Uh, she's called Reen. Um, he told me, man, you have to sit together with her. She's genius in chocolate. And um, so, Ale, the funny part is again, Channel Zero. Uh, somebody uh, sent me a couple of messages. Yeah, you need to see that girl because she's uh, amazing with the chocolate and blah blah blah. And yeah, I, I finally I went there, and so a guy who works on. Um, uh, aircraft engines convinced me to do a uh, chocolate and our um, yeah it's there <laughs> you get so, no chocolate your portfolio <laughs> well the thing is uh, yeah was it a, was there again a big uh, plan no the, the only thing which is important w when I do something I want people to have like full uh, passion about it and with these dragon eggs, it's again the same thing. Um, it took us a couple of uh, tests to get there. Since two weeks, uh, these two... Oh, my God. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> it's happy. Um, oh, la, la. Uh, so um, the thing is, I, I made this this thing and I said, well, I, I want to have something different. Uh, and, and yeah, yeah, we, we tested, we tested. Uh, we will actually will have one more test uh, with uh, with a notch heavier than this. So, uh, and I'll probably will do uh, like a, a, a contest. Eh? 
<laughs> eating the most. We let, people, we, we, let, we, let see, we see who's going to eat the most of it, and then we'll I'll, I'll provide the beer. <laughs> nice. And, um, if there is more fire coming out of their ass than out of their mouth, it's cool. <laughs> and, I, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably give them like 15 pounds of chocolate eggs <laughs> from the dragon. <laughs> so yeah, you know. And for the, for mean, the listeners, when is this coming out uh, to, to the market? Well, um, to be really honest, um, I don't know yet. Uh, the only reason why is that the, the chocolates are literally there like since a week and a half. Uh, now I'm looking for a really uh, cool way to package it and also how I can actually um, yeah make it um, also a little bit like cool and and and, and how do I get it uh, at the stores uh, the, the only thing at this moment is hard to tell um, I'm literally still have to calculate uh, do I sell it by a five by ten by you know it's all these things but it will depend mm -hmm. on the package so um I'm, I'm in the and in the phase now where i'm looking for a way to um to commercialize it but to commercialize it in a cool way yeah so uh it'll probably will take believe it or not the ice cream is already uh, more than seven or eight months old and i think it's like finished uh pop up uh one month and a half we have the we had the final uh I will show. I will show you two seconds. The whole, uh... yeah, the whole wrapping. Uh... <laughs> Again, it's, it, it all seems like very simple, but it's believe me, it's not. Because um, when you want to put it inside of a supermarket, you have the EU rules. Um, all the languages, uh, all the um, uh, allergies, cal calories, whatever, uh, everything has to be on. So before something like that is like literally finished, whew, it takes time. So um, I presume with the with the Dragon X, it'll take a couple of months. But um, once they will be inside your mouth, <laughs> you will get the Turbo Noir Dragon Egg. Explosion. <laughs> my God, my lips are red. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a lot. <laughs> Thank you. This bit for them. All right. Thanks a lot for the interview. No problem, man. Anytime. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.